Hello everyone. In this video, first I'll explain what is Service Connector, how to use Service Connector in Azure Container Apps, and finally show the step-by-step -step deployment of integration of Azure Container Apps with Azure SQL using the Service Connector. So let's start with what is Service Connector. So Service Connector is used to integrate Azure Compute Services with different other supported services. So the different compute services which are supported are Azure App Service, Azure Functions, Azure Spring Apps, Container Apps, and AKS. And in the target service, it can be Key Vault, Service Bus, SQL Database. But in this video, I'm going to show the integration of Azure Container Apps with Azure SQL Database. So once the service connector is created, it takes care of the network configuration as well as the authentication. So the compute service don't need to authenticate again to connect to the target service. And once it's set up, you just need to make changes in an application to use the environment variables of the service connector and all the connections will work smoothly. So in the lab, I'm going to show the integration of Azure Container Apps with Azure SQL Database. And for that, first we'll create a Python Flask web application in Visual Studio Code. Then using the Docker, I'll create the container image and then push the container image into Azure Container Registry. Once that is done, Azure SQL database will be created as well as Azure Container Apps. And once both the services are created, then using the service connector in Azure Container Apps, which is in preview, I'll create a connection between Azure Container Apps and Azure SQL database. And once this is done, we'll test our web application in the Azure Container Apps and see if it's providing the data from the Azure SQL database. So let me show you all these steps in the lab now. I'm logged into Azure portal now and let's first create an Azure SQL database. Look for Azure SQL. Click here, create. So let's create Azure SQL database, single database. Let's create a new resource group, RG service connector. Okay, database name is shell in the DB test 01. Create a new database server first. Shell in the DB server 01. And Australia East. And I'll use the SQL authentication. SQL admin and provide the password. So a SQL database server with the name Shalender DB server 01 will be created. For the backup, I'm just using LRS. For the connectivity method, I'm just enabling the public endpoints so that I can make changes in the database from my laptop. And in the firewall rules, I'm allowing different services to access to this resource. And I want my public IP address to be added in the firewall so that I can access the Azure SQL database. No more changes here and just create. First a SQL database server will be created and then the SQL database over it. The deployment has started now and I'll pause the video till it's finished. Database is created now. As you can see, first the SQL server is created and then the SQL database and fun and that the SQL database and the firewall changes are also made. So go to resource and this is the server name. Now if we'll go to the query editor and I'll log in using the SQL server authentication. So I'm able to log in now. I'll now copy paste one query where I'll first create a table and then add some entries to it. First this will create the table with ID, name and email and then two entries will be added to that table. One is Shalendra Chaudhary, another one is YouTube user. So let me run this. So query is successful. Let's refresh this, open the table. There is a my table which is created and there are three different entries. Now we have our database ready where there are some entries which we can use in our web app. Now I'll go to VS Code where I'll create the Python Flask web application. 
So I'm in the folder service connector where there are three different files, but it's highly recommended to create a virtual environment when we are using the Python. So Python hyphen M virtual environment environment. So this will create a virtual environment where all the dependencies will be taken care of. And apart from this, I have already installed Docker because once this Python application is ready, I have to create a Docker image of it and then push it to Azure container registry. So virtual environment is ready. Now let's open the Python app dot py. So it's importing the flask and jsonify, then Python ODBC connector and operating system. So what it's doing is it's creating a database connection where it's using some values, which will be created when we create the service connection. I'll show you later in this lab. Based on these values, a connection string is created. And by default, when you run the application, it will just show welcome to flask application. However, when you will use the slash data, then it will provide all the entries from my table, which we have just created in our database. And this app has ingress enabled. So anything from the internet on port 80 can access this application. Now this Python application is ready. Now I've created a Docker file where I'm using the Python 3.12 slim. And first I'm installing the dependencies for ODBC using the app get command. These dependencies will be installed first and then ODBC driver for SQL database. This will be installed. Finally, a working directory, which is slash app. Then everything will be copied to this directory. And then using the pip install, it will install all the different requirements. If we'll go to requirements.txt, it's installing flask. It is installing Python ODBC and request. So when you will be creating the image, it will install all the required dependencies and it will expose on port 80 and run the Python app PY. So that means the Python application will run on port 80 as it's exposed on port 80. So now we have all the files ready. And before I start building the Docker image, I have already created an Azure container registry. So let me go back. Container registry. So there is the Azure container registry with the name Shalinder YouTube lab. There are different repositories which are available, but we'll create a new one now. So let's go back to VS code and run the command docker build hyphen t and let's name it as service connector new app v1 version. So we are building the image now. But before we start building the image, let's first log in into Azure Container Registry. I'll run the command az acr login into the container registry. When I'll run this, because I've already connected to Azure subscription, so it will log in automatically. So login is succeeded. Now let's run this command again, docker build v1. Sorry, there was dot missing. And this is building the image now. And first it's saving the image locally. And then I'll push the image into the Azure container registry. It's installing all the requirements. And it's done. And now Docker push will push the image. And let's copy the name which we have given. Service connector v1. And let's push it. And it's pushing the image into the Azure container registry. First, it will create the repository and then push the image in it. It's already done. Let's go back. There were three repositories. Now let's check the another one. There is one more service connector new app. And you can see the v1 image which is created. Now we have Azure SQL database ready and we have our image ready in the container registry. And now let's create a new container app using this image. And then we'll connect this application to the SQL database using service connector. So go to container apps. You 
create a new container app i'll use the same resource group rg service connector shall end the web app 02 i'll use the container image and there is a app environment already created let's create a new one app env 01 i'm not enabling the zone redundancy and it will directly use the consumption profile and i'll use the azure monitor i'll not integrate with the virtual network for now just create it so this will create the container app environment now let's create the new container let's go to azure container registry service connector new app which we have created with the version v1 and everything by default there are no bindings which we are going to create yes we will enable the ingress and accepting traffic from anywhere review and create and create so the deployment of the azure container app has started and i'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's done Azure Container App is created now. As you can see, first the Azure Container App environment is created, then the Azure Container App. Let's go to Resource to the Container App. And it has application URL available because we have enabled the ingress. So if we'll go to the revisions and it's activating. So it's running now. Let's click on Overview. And perfect, it's showing the default page, which is welcome to Flask App. But if we'll use the data slash data, then it will fail because it will try to connect to the SQL database whose values we haven't provided. So invalid values are provided for the connection string. So it failed. Now what we have to do is, so let's go to the settings and in the settings, we'll go to service connector preview and create a new service connector. Now here the container is web app 02 service type what we are looking for is SQL database SQL database connection name SQL connection sorry we can't use hyphen SQL connection 01 and the SQL database server we have one which we have just created and the SQL database and the client type is Python Next is authentication we have to select. So if we are going to use the system assigned managed identity or user assigned managed identity, then we have to create it using the Azure CLI. We can use the connection string by providing the username and password of the database. However, if you don't want to provide the username and password, let's select the system assigned managed identity. Next for the networking, all the firewall rules will be configured. And these firewall rules are for the database firewall, like the network firewall rules. Next review and create. And then it will ask us to create on cloud shell. What we have to do is just click here and automatically all the commands will be done by Microsoft. So create on cloud shell. So it's requesting a cloud shell. And then all the commands will be run. So it's log first it's adding the extension of the container app. Then it's using the another extension service connector password less. So once this will be installed, then now using that it's creating the service connection for the Azure container app. And it's providing all the details which we have just selected. And it's using the system assigned managed identity. So all the authentication, all the network changes which are required will be automatically taken care here. And you want to set the current user as the entry admin user. Okay, let's do it. You can say no also here because it's just for your user that it will become the entry admin user. Now container app is getting access over the database. As you can see, grant control on database from container app to the database. And it's done. Now if we'll close this and we have to cancel here. And if we'll refresh a service connection is created. 
but it's not validated it's unvalidated so what we have to do is check here validate and it's validating the connection status and it's success now so that means now the container app can connect to sql database using the system assigned managed identity and these are the different environment variables which we have to use in our web application if i'll go back to visual studio and the python application so these are the key values which have to be provided and it will pick up all the values by itself these are hidden values but when the web application is using this value automatically it will pick up from the service connector and you don't have to provide all these values in your application so this is the reason service connector is used because then you don't have to provide the secret values into your web application so everything is ready now click on application url welcome to flask Let's run data and perfect. As you can see, it's showing the Shalendra Chaudhary as well as the YouTube user, both the users details it's showing. I'm not using the fancy details. It's just to show that our web app can fetch the details from the SQL database using the service connector. So to summarize this video, first I've explained what is service connector. And how do we use service connector in different compute services like Azure Container App? And finally showed the step-by-step -step demo where we first created a Python Flask web application, then using the Docker build an image, then push the image into Azure Container Registry, created Azure SQL database and Azure Container App. And then using the service connector created a connection or integration between Azure Container App and Azure SQL database. And then tested the integration using our Python Flask web application where the application is pulling the details from the database. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.